Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Now in today's video, I'm going to be going over high vibrational foods versus low vibrational foods. All right, so the reason why I'm making this video is because I want to spread awareness. I want to let everyone know that you need to pay more attention to the type of foods that you put in your body. All right, sometimes we don't realize when we're you know, eating out or eating certain foods or just, you know, eating in general, we don't take the time to consider what types of foods we're putting into our bodies. We don't necessarily think about how certain types of foods that we eat correlate or, or relate to disease, All right? So certain foods that you eat, whether it be, you know, GMO foods, processed foods, fast food, junk food, all these acidic and toxic and forming foods over time, when you start accumulating and eating all these certain foods, they start to rot and, you know, uh, cause disease within the body. All right. So we need to pay attention to the type of foods that we eat. All right. So none of us aren't perfect. I myself am not perfect. I always, always strive to eat as healthy as I can, but me, I'm not perfect as well. So all of all, all of our diets, and you know, are not going to be perfect. We're all not we're not we're not going to be perfect in our diet and the things that we choose to eat on a day to day basis. But it's important for us to keep in the back of our minds and at the forefront of our lives to take care of ourselves and to watch what we eat and try to eat as many healthy foods and take in the necessary vitamins and nutrients and minerals as we can. So I believe that taking care of ourselves, eating the right types of foods, eating the right amount of foods. I believe that's the highest expression of self-love. That's the highest expression of self-love that you can give. Giving love to your body, showing appreciation to your body, because when you, are, when you take care of your body now, your body will thank you for it now in the time ahead. So, you know the saying, you are what you eat. And I really embark on that saying, because when we eat these certain foods, you know, like I said in the beginning, we don't take the time to understand and realize that over time, you know, you know, our body started to get sick and tired of accumulating all these toxins. And that's when disease starts to manifest. We don't think about our health now, you know, especially when we're young, you know, we eat these certain foods, we you know, we don't get sick and things of that nature. And we think everything is handy dandy, but you will pay, you will pay the price for it in the long run, which once you get older, when you start to have arthritis, you know, inflammation, diabetes, cancer, all these things, it'll start to creep up on you later on in your life. All right. So in this video, I'm going to be going over high vibrational foods versus low vibrational foods, the foods that you should be consuming and the foods that you, and the foods that you should avoid. All right. So let's not waste any time. But let's go ahead and get started. So in this video, let's start off with the low vibrational foods. Let's, let's go ahead and get that section category out the way. So the first thing we got is meat. Now for me, I consider myself a certified vegan. You know, I, I, I've been, uh, I haven't been a vegan for that long, maybe about a year now. So the reason why I say meat and we shouldn't be consuming meat, there are a number of different reasons. But I'm going to go, I'm going to go uh, in depth into, you know, a few of them. So the number one reason why you shouldn't be eating meat is, first of all, we are not made to consume meat. The human body is not designed to consume meat. All right. So when you let's say you consume, you know, a couple of strawberries or a certain type of fruit on an empty stomach. So it would take the body, let's say. 20 minutes to digest di to digest fruit, certain fruits or all fruits. And when you consume vegetables on an empty stomach, it will take approximately 60 minutes. Now, let's say you consume a certain type of meat, whether it be a steak, a hamburger or a bacon or something like that. It would take the human body at the minimum five hours to digest meat. Now, that, that goes to show that we weren't made to di to consume and digest meat. It takes it takes the body longer to digest meat than vegetables and fruits and things like that. 
So we've been conditioned and we've been taught that we need a certain amount of protein in order to build muscle, since our muscles are made mostly of protein. Well, I'm gonna be, I think that's a complete myth if I'm gonna be honest with you. See, a protein is made up of 20 amino acids, and eight of those amino acids are considered essential because uh, we, we attain those amino acids from the foods that we eat. We have to attain that uh, protein or those amino acids from the foods that we eat. And the other 12 amino acids our bodies make on their own, all right? So we don't get our protein straight from food, and proteins don't come from straight proteins. They come from the breakdown of amino acids. So another reason why we shouldn't be eating meat, like I said earlier, it takes the body a longer period of time to digest meat, all right? And then when the, when the meat enters the body, the meat becomes undigested. So it starts to rot and ferment in the body and it starts to seep into the bloodstream. That's why it causes, you know, you hear people say meat causes all types of ailments within the body, it causes all types of cancer and all these diseases and things of that nature, all right? And then when you look at it from an animal perspective, have you noticed that when we say an animal like a lion eats his prey, it eats meat, you notice that when it's eating, it chops up and down. His jaw, jaw, his jaw chops up and down like this. And when we eat certain foods, we grind our teeth side to side. So we don't even eat the same way as animals do or carnivores do, all right? And their saliva is acidic, all right? Their stomach acid, their saliva is acidic, and ours is alkaline, all right? So we were made to be herbivores. We were made to be plant eaters and not meat eaters. But we, we've been so programmed and conditioned, you know, meat and chicken and things of that nature is just a part of our culture, it's a part of our society. And we've been doing it for generations and generations and generations. Our families have indoctrinated and, you know, given us meat and things like that to eat. But we weren't made to be meat eaters. We were made to be plant eaters and fruit fruit eaters we were supposed to eat we we're supposed to be eating the plants of the world the uh the fruits of the world all right so you know i'm a vegan so i'm i'm going to advocate and you know to not eat meat you know we're consuming all this meat killing harming innocent animals you know millions of innocent animals are getting killed every year for food and I believe we don't need animal products to, to, to survive in this world, to thrive in this world. We don't, we don't need to, you know, survive off chicken and meat and things like that because we're killing all these innocent animals, slaughtering all these animals because we have to realize that animals have feelings too. You know, animals go through fear and anxiety just like we do. And we're just, you know, consuming all this meat. And then there's uh, <clears throat> uh, millions, billions of people starving all around the world. So I would advocate that we should avoid, you know, eating meat since I'm a vegan. But, you know, I can't control what other people do, you know, do what you want to do. I'm just the messenger. I'm just, you know, trying to help people out and trying to get people to avoid eating meat because eating meat causes, you know, it's, it's a lot of dangers and health defects when it comes to eating meat. So do what you want to do, but I advise you to not eat meat. So next we got is dairy. Now, I've always questioned this, you know, when it comes to dairy. We as humans, why are we consuming cow's milk? Why are we consuming a, a different type of animal's milk? You, you never see, you know, a baby calf drinking horse's milk. Or you never see a baby kitten drinking a dog's milk. You know, we, we are the only ones that are consuming, uh, you know, an animal's milk such as cow's milk. All right, so we I think the the only milk we should be consuming is our mother's milk, you know, when we when we are babies. But I I don't it just it's just weird to me that we're drinking cow's milk and all these, you know, consuming all this dairy in general. All right? So, you know, milk, dairy, cow's milk, it contains all these different, you know, enzymes, hormones, chemicals that are not suited for the human body. Right? That's why 75% of people have some sort of allergic reaction to milk, to dairy in general. Right? And then it causes, you know, if people have 
uh, you know, you hear people have like lactose intolerant, people have different, you know, certain digestive issues when it comes to consuming dairy and things like that. So, that, you know, basic examples like that and statistics should let alone let you know and tell you that it's not normal and we shouldn't be, you know, the human body is not compatible with any type of dairy. And then when you look at cheese, for example, it takes one block of cheese contains 10 gallons of milk. It, 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 it takes 10 gallons of milk to make one block of cheese, right? And then I already gave you the, the health defects when it comes to milk. So I advise you all, we, we should not be consuming dairy. Dairy provides, you know, it, it, it gives you a whole lot of, you know, health issues and health defects, just like meat. Right, and then meat also, I forgot to mention this, meat contains a whole lot of saturated fat, and that's the type of fat that clogs arteries and things of that nature. All right, so back to dairy. We shouldn't be consuming dairy just like meat. It provides, you know, it gives a whole lot of health defects and health problems and things of that nature. So I, I advise you all to avoid dairy as well. So next we got is processed foods. And, you know, this should be obvious. We should be avoiding processed foods. You know, processed foods come from, you know, all, you know, all these fast food chains, fast food restaurants, uh, you know, the fast, quick paced foods. You know, processed foods contains all these different chemicals and additives and sweeteners and things like that. So it should be obvious that we should be avoiding processed foods, right? So when it comes to these type of foods, I'm not saying complete to avoid them at all costs. You know, it would be great if you could avoid them at all costs. But I'm going to tell you, you know, don't take, don't get carried away with the foods that don't benefit you at the end of the day. That's all I'm going to say. Don't get carried away with foods that don't benefit you. So don't consume these low vibrational foods every single day because if you do, you will reap the consequences. All right. So processed foods, we should all know they're unhealthy or they're, they're not good for us. So we should, you know, uh, eliminate processed foods as much as we can. So next we got artificial sugar slash sweeteners slash ingredients. Now, sugar is a hell of a drug. I'm just saying like it is and we all, we all should know this by now. Sugar is a hell of a drug and sugar is considered a drug because of its addictive qualities. All right, so these food companies, these food labels, these restaurants, you you ever notice that they add sugar in every, man, they add sugar in every single food item, food packaging, uh, just, just everything we consume, they always have to add some type of sugar. And I'm pretty sure you know why, because sugar controls our reality if we let it. Because we can be, we can become so addicted to sugar that it just runs our world. It can, it, you know, sugar is borderline addiction. We may think that we are satisfying a sweet tooth, but at the, but at the end of the day, it's a borderline addiction. And they know they can tr they can control us with sugar, and then we consume, you know, especially you know high fructose corn syrup, added uh, sugars, added preservatives, and things like that. Just anything added that's not necessary. It hijacks our taste buds. It hijacks the way we think. That's why I believe when we consume certain foods, it hijacks our mind. It, it, it affects how we think and affects how we move. You know, it affects how we perceive ourselves and perceive the world. But that's that's how strong food is. And we need to pay attention to the type of foods that we eat. All right. So artificial sugar, high fructose corn syrup, <clears throat> excuse me, you know, and they try to label artificial sugar, added sugars with different aliases, with different names and things like that. So when we consume artificial sugar and things of that nature, our body doesn't recognize it. So it becomes undigested and it seeps into our bloodstream. That's why it causes inflammation. It causes diabetes. It causes cancer and things like that. So when we consume this stuff over time, it starts to manifest into, into disease and it raises our insulin levels up. It raises our blood sugar up and things like that. So avoid artificial sugar at all costs, you know, limit your consumption, consumption of sugar. Try to avoid added preservatives, added sugars and things of that nature. 
So next we got is fast food. Now I mentioned fast food a little bit in the processed foods. We all know fast food it contains all types of chemicals. Uh, you know, fast food, when it comes to meat and French fries and you know all these uh, different foods from McDonald's, Wendy's, Burger King. You know, fast fast consumption foods. You know, when 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 you consume food that's just quick and easy, that's you, that's it's it's just obvious. It's it's in plain sight that we shouldn't be eating and indulging in fast foods all the time. So try to avoid your consumption of fast foods as much as you can. So next we got a junk food. Same thing with junk food. The candy that we eat, the baked goods, uh, the cakes, ice cream, chips, candy, Skittles, things like that. All that is considered junk food. Right, and then it's a whole junk food is a whole bunch of empty calories. That's why you have to go and you know and get more when you eat like a certain amount of cookies or a certain amount of candy. That's why you're always going and getting more. You end up eating the whole bag of chips because it's just a bunch of empty calories. It doesn't fill you, it doesn't satisfy you. That's why you feel that's why a whole bunch of people are overfed, malnourished, and things of that things of that nature because we're consuming empty calories. These junk foods and processed foods, they're nothing but empty calories. And that's why we're always getting more and more and more and we never feel full or satisfied until we eat a whole bunch of them, all right? So next we got acidic beverages and alcohol. Now acidic beverages, we all know acidic beverages like you know uh, Sprite, uh, Root Beer, Dr. Pepper, all these different, you know, carbonated drinks contain all types of sugar and high fructose corn syrup. High fructose corn syrup is all is in almost all the, you know, sugary items, sugary foods, sugary drinks. And it's just it's just bad for your health overall and it's bad for your teeth. You know, that's when you know sugar is really bad for you when it uh breaks down the enamel of your teeth because the enamel in your teeth is pretty strong. So if it can break down the enamel in your teeth, then you, then you know that's bad for you. And then you, you know, constantly going to the dentist and things of that nature. And then with alcohol, you know, we consume a certain amount, you know, too much alcohol. It puts strain on your liver and, you know, the liver and the kidneys. These are the main organs that work to eliminate toxins and things of that nature within the body. So when you're consuming alcohol all the time, it puts a toll on your kidneys. It puts a toll on your liver. Right, and that's how it manifests into disease because the body and the, the, the digestive system, the small intestines, is always trying to work. It's always you know working to eliminate these toxins. And once you accumulate all these toxins all the time, you know your body can't take it. And that's how disease forms. That's how disease manifests. All right, so avoid acidic beverages and alcohol. So next we got is GMO foods. Now, GMO stands for genetically modified organisms. Now, GMO foods are not natural in nature, right? The foods that you get from nature, like from the fruits, the plants, those are natural foods. Those are the foods that we should be eating. Those are the foods that God has placed on this planet, that's, that's, that he has placed on this earth for us to consume. Now, with genetically modified organisms, these are the foods that are made in the labs. These are the foods that are man-made. These are the foods that can only maintain their life through man, through the, the through the upkeeping of man. That's why you have you know things such as GMO meat, GMO chicken, GMO fruit, GMO plants. You know the GMO fruits are the fruits without seeds. So we should all know that fruits of their origin have seeds in them. And when you see fruits without seeds in them, that's when you know they're not of origin. They are not natural. Same thing with chicken, GMO chicken. You know, they're injecting hormones and growth hormones to make the chickens bigger. And it's just un unnatural. Everything made in the labs, all these foods made in the labs is unnatural. And those are genetically modified organisms. They extract DNA from certain animals and put them into another animal or into another plant or into another fruit to make something that's not natural right and we should be avoiding gmo foods at all costs as well so next we got artificial soy 
Now, 94% of all food products in America contain genetically modified soy. Now, soy originated in Japan. They make natural soy in Japan. But here in America, like I stated, 94% of all food products contain genetically modified soy, right? And especially within males, soy, artificial soy in particular, raises the estrogen levels within all men. That's why, and then a lot of these products nowadays, they contain a whole lot of soy. If you look at the, at the ingredients, the, the nutritional facts of certain food products, always contain certain type of soy, all right? And then when men, especially men, when they consume too much artificial soy, it raises the estrogen levels. It raises your estrogen levels. Now you see a lot, you know, a lot of men, they're, you know, de depressed. Uh, they start to become more feminine. That's what artificial soy does. It makes men become more feminine. And it, they, I, think, I believe they've done a lot of experiments on this as well. When they give a certain amount of soy to a certain animal, like a male frog would turn into a female frog or have female frog tendencies. You know, things of that nature. So artificial soy is bad for you as well. So next we got hybrid foods. Now hybrid foods are all on the you know the same lines as GMO foods. Hybrid foods are you know man-made, made in the lab, they're not natural. You know, they extract genes from a certain type of plant and, 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 and input it into another type of organism, and you make it and then they make it into uh, a new form of plant or fruit or animal things like that so hybrid foods are basically man-made they're made in the lab they're not natural they don't come from the earth they don't come from god so we should always be striving to eat raw foods raw foods that come from the earth that come from god because they have life force they have life energy just like meat 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 is denatured it has no energy it's dead it's denatured and especially when you cook it when you cook meat you're extracting and eliminating the, the the nutrients from the meat, right? So we should be always be consuming raw foods, natural foods that come from the earth, foods that have life force, that have life energy, that's able to give us energy in order to thrive throughout the day, all right? So next we got caffeine slash energy drinks. Now for all the coffee lovers of the world, the Starbucks lovers of the world, you know, you have to get your morning cup of coffee before you go to work, before you go to school. But we have to realize, you know, caffeine actually dehydrates us. When we're consuming large amounts of caffeine, when we're drinking coffee every single day, we might get that temporary energy boost, but over time it starts to dehydrate us, all right? And then energy drinks, energy drinks, like I said, like I said with caffeine, it gives us, it gives us that natural i mean that temporary energy boost but it dehydrates us at the end of the day right and it contains a whole lot of sugar and uh high fructose corn syrup corn syrup additives and things of that nature all right so i be, i always believe that we should be drinking water and when we drink a certain amount of water throughout the day it keeps us full you know it takes you know we start to eat less we it wakes us up it keeps us energized that's why I always, you know, I want to let people know, you know, when you get up in the morning, drink drink a, a bottle of warm water or drink a cup of warm water. That way it, it, lubric it lubricates your digestive system, all right? So always be drinking water. Always be drinking a large amount of water. I'm telling you, if you drink, a, you know, at least five bottles of water a day, it will it will energize you. It will wake you up. It will... You know, like I said, it in the morning when you drink a bottle of water, it lubricates your digestive system and it keeps you going throughout the day. All right, you may use the bathroom, you know, every 20 minutes. That's the worst part about it when you're drinking a lot of water. I'm gonna tell you, tell you this first right here. But at the end of the day, it keeps you energized, it keeps you focused, and increases your alertness. So always be drinking your water. All right. So next we got pesticide ridden foods slash fruits. Now, now, nowadays they, you know, they spray all these different pesticides, you know, within the fruits and the uh, plants and the foods that we have in our produce section in the stores. You know, the reason why they do this is because so they can preserve uh, the food longer. So they can kill the, the rodents and the bugs that try to eat up all the crops and things of that nature. But, 
there's a negative effect behind that. It, you know, eliminates all the nutrients from the foods. It kills the soil, it kills the ground from where the plants and the fruits are growing. But, you know, it, it just leaves a, you know, a negative health effect on our bodies as well, while the pesticide ridden vegetables and fruits and things like that. So I'll try to avoid, you know, any type of uh, pesticide ridden fruits and foods and plants and things like that. So then we got juice slash packaged drinks juice it's not even real juice it's probably approximately two percent fruit juice is not even real juice the rest of it is high fructose corn syrup sugar added preservatives and things like that you know and uh packaged drinks contain a whole lot of sugar high amounts of sugar and you know our bodies run off sugar that's what that's what it's called glucose that's our natural sugar that our bodies use for energy all right, so there's a difference between glucose and fructose. Our bodies react differently between glucose and fructose. Our bodies naturally run off of glucose. When it comes to fructose, it's the complete opposite. All right, so keep that in mind. So then we got canned slash packaged foods. Same thing with packaged drinks. Contains a whole lot of, you know, sodium. Uh, added preservatives to keep the food fresh, all these different chemicals and things like that. So always, you know, limit your consumption when it comes to any type of packaged foods or packaged drinks, all right? So then we got vegetable oils. Vegetable oils contain a whole lot of different chemicals and additives that we should avoid. So there's different plant-based cooking oils or suggestions that I'll leave on the screen right here. Try to utilize those. Try to utilize those type of cooking oils instead of vegetable oil. And we got diet and processed low fat products. So we may believe that, you know, we might be drinking a, you know, a can of Coke. And then we might, you know, say, you know, I'm I'm going I'm, I'm to go with the healthier option. I'm going to drink Coke Zero. And we might, you know, think that's the healthier option. So we're getting our cake and eating it too. But we have to realize that most of the time, these low fat products, these low sugar products actually contain more sugar than the actual product. So when you see in low fat, low fat cookies or, uh, you know, diet Dr. Pe or diet Coke, diet Dr. Pepper, things like that. These low fat products or these low fat products that they claim that they are actually contain more sugar than the actual product. All right, so we need to we need to know that. Then we got microwave meals. You know, microwave my, microwave meals. You know, like like with the processed foods, it's quick and easy when you put it in the microwave. But microwave meals contain a whole lot of sodium. Uh, most of them have no nutritional value and things like that. So try to limit your consumption of microwave meals. All right. So that's the low vibrational foods. You know, I know that was a long one, but let's go ahead and get to, you know, the most important foods, which is the high vibrational foods that you should be consuming on a day-to-day -day basis, all right? So we got fruits. Now you need to make sure that the fruits are seeded. That's the key. Like I stated with you know, the hybrid foods, the GMO foods, like the GMO fruits, hybrid foods, they contain no seeds. So we, we should be avoiding those type of fruits. So all fruits that you can that you eat, that you that you decide to eat, whether it be grapes, uh, apples, peaches, watermelon, all of them need to be seeded. You need to make sure that all fruits are seeded. Those are the natural fruits that come from the earth. Those are the natural fruits that come from God. So then we got vegetables. All in all, vegetables are very good for you. They contain different types of nutrients and minerals, uh, tomatoes. Uh, spinach, kale, uh, uh, all, all, all the different, all the different types of vegetables that you should be consuming on a day to day basis. All right, I'll leave some examples, uh, some plant based examples that you can, you know, jot down or, uh, you know, put on your list, put on your grocery list. I'll leave them on the screen as I go. So we have natural spring water and coconut water. Now, the reason why I'm being specific when it comes to natural spring water and coconut water is most water that we consume is not, necessarily, not, is not necessarily good for us. 
you know, the water that contains added minerals for enhanced flavor and things like that. So natural spring water and coconut water, they actually come from the earth. They actually come from nature and they're processed naturally. Whereas the other types of water, like, you know, uh, Sam's Club water, Kroger brand, Walmart, Fiji water, you know, they, they're not processed naturally. They contain added, you know, uh, things, added minerals for enhanced taste and things like that. So when it comes to natural water, natural spring water, it contains no added or extras for preserved taste. It comes from nature, all right? And natural spring water and coconut water is actually better for you and better for your overall health, all right? So those are the main two beverages that you need to, that you need to focus on is natural water and natural spring water and coconut water. So next is whole grains. Always, always consuming your whole grains, you know, whole grains, uh, seeds, whole grain seeds, and things of that nature. Then we got nuts and seeds. Like I said, with the whole grains or organic nuts and seeds, I'll leave some examples on the screen that you can look at uh, for the nuts and seeds as well as whole grains. So we got herbs and superfoods. Got herbs such as you know, uh, sea moss, bladder rack burdock root, all these different superfoods and herbs. Leave, I'll, leave some of the, I'll leave some of those examples of those as well. And then we got fiber. Fiber is an excellent you know, source for your body. It's good for your health. It's good for heart health, uh, especially soluble fiber. You can get this from oatmeal and things like that. So always be consuming your fiber. Now, almond milk, I believe that almond milk is a better option, a better replacement for cow's milk. You know the cow, cow's milk. The cow's milk's got to go, man. Cow's milk's got to go. It got, it, it, it's got to get up out of here. So I believe that almond milk is a better option, a better replacement for regular milk. And almond milk is a you know a healthier option. It's good for you. So consume some consume some olive, almond milk in your life. And then we got oats, oatmeal. You know, good source of fiber. Like I said, with fiber, oatmeal is a good source of fiber, soluble fiber. You know, oats is pretty good and pretty good for you as well. Now, last but not least, we got fasting. Now, fasting is good for the mind, body, and soul. Now, I've been on a, I've been on a whole lot of fast with throughout my life. I just started fasting maybe, I would say in the summer of 2023, that's when I started fasting, uh, you know, consistently and, you know, religiously. I would fast for two days out of the whole week. Now, I never went past 24 hours, but I've consistently fasted on Sundays and Wednesdays for for 24 hours consistently. And it, it has done a, a great deal on my body. It made me, it's made me feel rejuvenated. It's, you know, your body, when you're fasting, your body's not concentrating or, or exerting so much energy into digesting your food. So we, you know, we consume all this food and we're eating every single day and we're constantly putting strain and work and energy on our digestive system and we never take the time and we never take the opportunity to give our digestive system a break, all right? So that's when fasting comes in. So fasting it has a lot of physical benefits and then it has a lot of spiritual benefits as well. So when you're fasting, your body is not so concentrated on digesting all this food that you've been consuming. So it uses all the all the energy that it has is not digesting the food to do the other things and the other to perform other functions in order to heal your body. Now, when it comes to spirituality, you know, people that overeat, they have a habit or addiction of overeating. This is an imbalance in one of the chakras. This this correlates to an imbalance in one of the chakras. Now, the root chakra is, is associated with your physical body. So if there is an imbalance with your root chakra, which deals with, you know, survival and food and shelter, things like that, then that correlates to, you know, somebody like somebody that's overeating. So when we become balanced, when we have our chakras aligned and balanced, that's when we start to realize and wake up our minds and to realize that our body is our temple. Our body is our temple for our spirit. And if we don't take care of our God-given temple, then, you know, we start to experience all these negative effects that happen in our lives when it comes to 
uh, you know, like diseases and you know, stress, anxiety, depression, and things like that. So I always believe that, you know, fasting is a great way to heal, to heal thyself. The body is a great way to heal the body in every which way. All right. So I encourage you all to fast. You know, just if this is your first time fasting, I would suggest to take it slow. You know, start off with five hours and then go to 10 hours, 12 hours, 15 hours, 20 hours. Keep going up the ladder until you feel more comfortable uh, <clears throat> fasting for a longer period of time. Now, if you have, you know, certain health problems, you have to take medicine, things like that, then I'll advise you to, you know, speak to your doctor about that. But if you don't have any type of health problems, if you don't have to take medicine, things like that, I encourage you all, to, I encourage all of you all to fast, man. Fasting is, you know, it, it has done me wonders. It, it's a miracle worker. And it's, it, it's such a, it's, it's an ancient practice as well. It's been practiced for over thousands of years to, you know, to heal the body. All right. So I encourage you all of you, all of you to fast it, you know, you won't regret it. It gives you a lot of energy. It gives you, you know, a boost of energy It increases your mood. You just feel better. It's just like a whole load that has just, just, just been taken off of you from fasting. So I encourage all of you all to fast. It, you know, you reap the benefits from your mind, body, and soul. All right? All right, guys. So there you have it. These, this is my list for high vibrational foods versus low vibrational foods. You know, you can screenshot this board if you want to. Uh, screenshot some of the, uh, you know, the pictures that I've shown, the... Uh, healthy food items that you can get, you know, try to, you know, if you're interested in cooking, if you've been thinking about cooking, you know, uh, utilize those foods, look up certain recipes, you know, on plant-based foods, because I encourage everybody to go on a plant-based diet, because we, like I said, we were all made to be plant eaters, we weren't made to be meat eaters, we were supposed, we were put on this planet to eat the fruits and the plants of the world, so I encourage you all to go on a plant-based diet and, you know, we, we need to start looking at food differently. You know, we need to be eating to live, not eating to die. And food should be our main source of medicine. When we consume all this bad food and toxic food that's uh, wreaking havoc on our body and causing all types of ailments and diseases and things like that, then that's when the pharma, you know, that's when we turn to the pharmaceutical co company, the big pharma, prescribing all these medicines and prescriptions and, you know, things like that. It's all part of a system, man. It's all part of a system. So we eating all these bad foods, and then we turn to big pharma and consume all these prescription drugs. Who it doesn't even cure us at the end of the day. You know, we have we have the the largest healthcare system, but we're like the sickest nation in the world. You know, the U.S. is I was at number one in obesity. You know, Americans are very sick and obese. So I, we should all be, you know, thinking about food differently. If we think about food differently, if we think about our health, if we think about, you know, the foods that we eat as medicine and not man-made medicine and modern medicine, because that's what the, that's what the original medicine is, is food, healthy food at that. So if we change our perception, change our mind when it comes to food, then, you know, the rest will take care of itself. You know, we start to live more happy in vibrant lives when we start to look at food differently all right so keep that in mind I always you know take care of your mental health take care of your physical health take care of your spiritual health and things of that nature all right so until next time and always remember all power resides from within and always keep the faith because god and the universe is always working for you take care guys god bless